Grab your thinking caps, Wargamers, because today we're talking about the limits of Wargaming. This is the remnants of a battle that I attempted to play out, first time using a new set of rules, and it just didn't work. Primarily because I was using the wrong kind of bases for the battle. But, as I was playing through this game, I, I had some thoughts kind of settle in, particularly as I was setting it up on the limits of Wargaming. And when I mean the limits of Wargaming, what I mean is how much can one player handle? The game that I tried to play was a bit of a bluff and counter bluff, counter bluff game. And it was a game that was designed for two players. Not a very good solo game. That was my first mistake. And one of the reasons that it was not a good solo game is because you had to develop a strategy and react to the surprises that your opponent delivered to you. Well, if you're playing a solo game, it's a little hard to have any surprises. So that's the first mistake. The other mistake is that there's just too dang many units on the table to be able to handle both of them in a reasonable amount of time. And when I say that, let's talk a little bit about what I mean by a unit. Am I talking about this base? Or am I talking about a unit that looks like that. These three bases put together may be... Oh, it's it's 11 o'clock. Did you know roosters go off at 11 o'clock? Yeah, it turns out they do. It may be that these three are infantry figures are one unit. This is one variable that you as the wargamer have to keep track of. Here we have a an infantry unit that is twice as big... But maybe it's as easy to track them as it is them. Because even with six bases, this is one unit and this is one unit. Maybe, and I think that probably one of the best examples is, uh, if, if you're a Warhammer player, the Skavens use Goblin Slave units. They're blocks with a hundred figures. Ten across, ten deep. There are some Napoleonic games that use the Russians have a large size, is it battalion, or regiment? I don't even know. Like I said, I'm not the most experienced guy at Black Powder Era, learning as I go, as one does in this hobby. But the Russians use large units, so you may have 64 figures that you have to paint for that block. But that block is no harder to use than a block of, say, six cavalrymen. Because the 64 figures are one discrete, well, you could call them one figure. They're one maneuver unit. They're one variable that you have to track. What's your limit? Now, and specifically what I wanted to talk to you about is this artificial distinction we have between... Skirmish games, where every base is one unit, and rank and flank, or big block games, where these nine guys are a decision unit for you, and in a skirmish, this one guy is a decision unit for you. If you abstract it out, these long, blocky games are essentially the same as a skirmish where each individual figure is just a hit point. It's just a mark of how effective it is in battle. And you can paint one figure and keep track of its hit points, or use a die to keep track of the wounds that it has. But are you fundamentally playing a different game than this guy who simply take, tracks his wounds by removing figures? No, all you're doing is saving yourself some painting. And remember that here at the Joy of Wargaming, we think that painting is a reward. It's not a punishment. It's not an obstacle that you have to overcome before you can sit down at the table. It is a part and parcel of the joy of this hobby is doing the painting. So from a experiencing the hobby point of view, this might be a lesser style of gaming with respect to the fact that painting one figure 
involves less enjoyment than painting nine figures. And painting one figure instead of nine might get you to the table faster, but you've just cut your your enjoyment of that other aspect of the hobby by almost, well, here, we'll make the math easy. Oh, there's 10. One instead of, of 10, you cut it by, you know, 90%. It's like 88%. It's okay. So why am I talking about all this? Well, because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter whether you're dealing with 20 of these guys or 20 of these guys, you're playing the same game. And one of the things to be aware of when you're looking at what kind of games to play, if you're still, at this late date, stuck in a situation where you have to game solo, or maybe you just enjoy solo war gaming that's me be aware of how many decision units you have within the rule set so that you don't overstep your ability to track the information and your ability to strategize around that many figures um so yeah, maybe not the most profound thought but uh an observation but something I thought it was worth pointing out, there really isn't that big a difference between skirmish gaming and non-skirmish wargaming when you look at it from an abstract point of view. And what can I tell you? I might be overthinking this, but overthinking things is kind of what we do. This is a thinking man's hobby. It is not a hobby for stupid people. And if you're watching this video, it's because you're not an idiot. It's because you also like to tease and tear these things apart. And you can read a simple paragraph like this paragraph from, well, and you can understand how the simple rules begin to interact with greater and greater complexity. And even a third page of rules can really, if you're not fully on top of it, can b blow your game out of the water. Um, because unless and until you understand how each of those dozen rules intersects, you might find yourself in a situation where you're pondering, hmm, if the British start like this, is this line? How am I supposed to put these guys into column if I only have one discrete unit that is in this shape? Shouldn't I have based these guys, you know, six to a base? And, you know, if these guys, a single unit is two by three, I'm going to need a lot more two by three units. But that's a fiddly bit that's specific to two millimeter gaming. And that's one of the reasons why it may not be everybody's cup of rancid paint water or brush cleaning water. I, I know you've sipped from it. We all have. We've all been there. It's it's kind of a rite of passage for us. Uh, at any rate, I, that's about all I've got for you today. That's, mm. I don't want to sound too much like a certain uh, drinker who is critical of movies. Um, there's some thoughts for you on the limits of, of wargaming and the limit of what you can handle at the wargaming table and why maybe these $1.50 rules aren't discussed for a reason because they're a little too hard for most people to grasp and why you might want to have a second player just so the two of you can sit and, and enjoy the process of unraveling the Gordian knots of rules that intersect in some strange and surprising ways. Sometimes, keep it simple, stupid, is the wisest advice you can get. I don't know how I'm going to keep it simpler than this for my next video, but I hope you'll come along with me for the ride. Whether it works or not, these are all great experiments. Until then, I'm praying for you.